All right, friends, I have a confession to make, which is that I have spent way too much time looking at and researching the story that we are about to bring you about Alec Baldwin's wife, Hilaria, or Hillary, as she was actually born, posing for years and years and years as a Spanish person. This isn't just like having sort of, you know, cultural appropriation, which I think that whole thing is kind of nonsense. She lied about where she was born. She affected this like fake Spanish accent, all as part of an attempt to make her more sexy and interesting to further her like weird wellness Instagram influencer brand. Um, one of the more like awkward moments in this, uh, by the way, Hilaria Baldwin, born in Boston, We'll show you in a moment. She sort of cops to her actual story after having misled people for years and years uh, in Instagram recently. But part of the trail of evidence of the way that she's been presenting herself was this ridiculous clip on the Today Show where she's like preparing some recipe and pretends to forget what the English word for cucumber is. Let's take a listen to that. Two ingredients. We have tomatoes. We have... Um and Rachel, she is now <laughs> respond. I know it's like it's so. How do you say cucumber? Um, she's now responded to all of this. And and by the way, just to get like I've gone so deep on this thing. This all started with like some feud with Amy Schumer, and then people started digging in to all of the weird inconsistencies in the way that Hilaria has been presenting herself and the fact that sometimes she has a Spanish accent like in that clip and other times she doesn't and you know was she born in Boston or she'd said that she was born in Spain but actually she was anyway people from her high school came out and were like what are you talking about this is Hillary a white girl that I went to high school with I don't know where all this like Spanish thing came from so she responded in an Instagram post let's take a look at that so there's been some questions about where I'm born. I'm born in Boston. And then I spent some of my childhood in Boston, some of my childhood in Spain. My family, my brother, my parents, my nephew, everybody is over there in Spain. Now I'm here. And so there was like a lot of back and forth my entire life. And I'm really lucky that I grew up speaking two languages and I'm trying to raise my kids so that they speak two languages too. Um, and that's something that's very important for me, especially having my family abroad. Um, so that was one thing. I think people ask sometimes about how I speak. I am that person that if I've been speaking a lot of Spanish, I, you know, tend to mix them. And if I'm speaking more English, I, you know, doing a lot of English, then I mix that. It's one of those things that's always been a little bit, I've been a little insecure about over different times. And, you know, when I try to work, I try to enunciate a little bit more. But if I get nervous or upset or something, then I start to, to mix the two. So I guess, Rachel, my thing here is like the whole you know, fraught debate over cultural appropriation to me is not really the point here. The point here is really, this is just like a straightforward con. She created this fake identity for herself in order to, you know, garner Instagram followers and chase this sort of like celebrity culture thing. And by the way, if you go on her Instagram, it's like the grossest thing imaginable. It's her whole brand is like she has five kids with Alec Baldwin and still finding excuses to like pose in her underwear with the baby and show how amazing she looks even three months after having a kid. Like that's her, that's apparently her sort of, that's her thing. Um, anyway, so, it touches on all of these weird, fascinating pieces of not only racial and cultural appropriation, but then the sort of grifting and the obsession with celebrity and this weird influencer culture where she has 900,000 followers on Instagram and a podcast and this whole thing that she's like invented for herself through essentially this long term con. Yeah, I would. I really like to thank you for this gift of late stage yeah. capitalism <laughs> you're, that you're I now have seen <laughs> Hilaria Baldwin's Instagram, and there are things in my brain I'm never going to be able to unsee now. But like this is this is like truly like the most 2020 story we didn't need. But it's this like this culture we live in now, where like otherwise completely unremarkable people can go to a study abroad, come home, decide it's not cool to be American, fake being Spanish, and then live the con for like a decade 
and make millions of dollars from it. Um, and I mean, she, it, it, I have to think like, did she meet Alec Baldwin when she was like already faking this? And then she's like, well, I'm committed now. Like, because she gave her kids <laughs> Spanish names. Like it's, she lived it all the way through. I mean, I guess kudos to that. But to your point, it was like a fake money-making exercise and we all fell for it, which is, which is fine, right? Like, I guess everybody has to make a buck, but don't present yourself as like completely like a genuine role model. You know, one of those people who poses in their, you know, with their newborn in their underwear being like, well, you know, embrace your body. You know, I'm just blessed. Right. And it's just like, I can't, I can't. What is wrong with her? Her Instagram oh, is to me far more offensive than actually the cultural appropriation piece. Cause it's like, it's every bad stereotype of this type of Instagram influencer. Cause she does exactly like you said, like her, her stock and trade, is that what you say? Stock and trade. Anyway, her thing that she does is like finding excuses to do yoga poses in her underwear with her babies pretending like this is like some body positivity move when you're really and like you're so brave for doing this when you have this like you know perfectly sculpted perfect after baby body so what you're really doing is shaming all the women who do not have the money and luxury of achieving such a shape immediately after giving birth to children then there's like you know there's all the like brand promotions there's all the language of like phony wellness like painting this as some like wellness effort and the intense grift involved around that there's the obsession with celebrity and having to have this personal brand for the world and that's where the you know the sexy like latin woman came into the mix um so it is kind of a profound statement even though it's a stupid story and i apologize to all of you for now knowing way more about this than you ever should have had to <laughs> It does touch on a lot of things that are very emblematic of this moment that we are living in. Yeah, no, it, it the 2020, the dumpster fire story we needed. But again, <laughs> like, you know, we live in a country where we've like gutted the industrial Midwest and replaced them with people like Hilaria Baldwin, Hillary Baldwin, whatever, uh, with Instagram influencers. And that so should true. like make us think very deeply about who we are as a country. <laughs> it is one more sign of the core rot at the center of the country. I think you put it very well, Rachel. Tomorrow on Rising, we're not gonna talk about that anymore. Max Alvarez and Marsha Koslov are gonna be here for Team Rising. A couple of our favorites are gonna be back, front of the show and host the Bad Faith Podcast. Brianna Joy Gray is gonna join me. Also Washington Post economics reporter Jeff Stein discussing funding the latest relief bill. Definitely wanna be tuned in for that. Remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, don't forget to like and share as well. Rachel, thank you so much for helping me out today. Rachel will be back again tomorrow, um, you know, assuming that she feels like this all went okay for her and isn't too <laughs> upset about anything I said during the show. Rachel, thank you. Um, everybody, I'm here for it. <laughs> okay, everybody have a fantastic day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, guys.